Welcome to Palma Marina in Mallorca, where I have got an opportunity to show you around one of the coolest boats I've seen in a very long time. Now we've seen some catamarans before, but I don't think you ever will have seen a catamaran quite like this one. This is the new Sunreef 100 Power. And I wanted to start by just giving you a little bit of an idea of the scale of it. So here we have a very lovely Reva. I think it's a 56 foot Reva. Now have a look at the width of that boat. And let me just walk with it. So it's one, two, three, maybe four meters wide. Now here is the Sun Reef 100 next to it. And I'm gonna count out the same steps as I start. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now I know that's not an accurate measurement, but it gives you some kind of idea that it's approximately four times the width of a sort of 55, 60 foot monohull. So we're not just talking about the 100 foot length, it's that enormous 16 or 15 meter beam. I think it's 14 and a half meters technically, but it gives you some kind of an idea. It takes up pro probably three berths to fit in just because of that width. And down here, before we get on board, that is the tender, and that is a 4.9 meter BSA tender with a 70 horsepower outboard on it, and that sits on the bathing platform. But if you get an idea that that is the tender alone, and that's the mothership up above, it gives you some kind of an idea of the scale we're talking about. Now this particular boat costs around 14 million euros ex taxes. Obviously a lot of money, but then don't think in terms of 100 foot length, think in terms of the amount of volume and real estate and deck space that that buys you. So let's get on board and take a proper look. The captain and crew have very kindly given me permission. They're even a little welcoming committee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. So we've got the electric passerelle already out and then a huge stairway up to the cockpit. Now this is the hydraulic platform I'm talking about. Now I've seen a few platforms in my life but nothing quite as large as that. I mean you could pretty much have a, you could put, set up a table tennis table, whatever you like on that if you wanted, but obviously that whole thing drops down into the water, makes it launching the tender very, very easy and then you have a wonderful beach at sea level. Then this lovely wide stairway up into the cockpit. And again, it's that beam. I know I'm going to be saying this quite a lot as we go around this boat, but look at the size. So you've got these huge wide side decks here, massively wide cockpit. And you, again, look at the kind of scale that we get here. So this is the outdoor dining table. It's wonderfully sheltered. You can see you've got the flybridge extension carries out right to the full length, gives you perfect shade under here. And then you've got this lovely 10 person dining table here. Now these are rather clever. Obviously these are set up in sun pad mode at the moment, but they all have variable backrests. So if I pick up this one and put it down, that goes down and then you can pull up the backrest on this side. And then you can see you've got a lovely forward facing seat. So that all marries up the table and then you can do that all the way along and equally reverse it. And it's the same that side too. You can lift up that side of the backrest and then you've got a lovely forward facing sunbed. So all of those sunbeds do exactly that. They can face either way. They can become a bench for the table. There's another very lovely sheltered sunbed over in this corner, which obviously being tucked in right up next to the saloon doors effectively. And there's also a glass panel in there. It's probably too clean for you to actually see that, but that makes it wonderfully sheltered underway. You've obviously completely protected from any kind of breeze. Lovely spot just to hang out and read a book of an afternoon or something. And let's, while we're here, let's have a quick look at some of the scale of the mooring gear. Look at this. 
I mean, it's absolutely immense, but then you have got a lot of boat to hold against the key. So you can see the size of those cleats and the winches. And while we're here, let's just do a quick tour of the decks again, giving you some idea of the scale. And look at the width of this. It's absolutely epic. I mean, I can, <laughs> I can just about touch either side, but you get an idea of the scale. It's just fabulous. And I love the fact that these bulwarks have been cut away so that you get a fantastic view out from the saloon when you're inside. And then look at this. Now that is what I call a four deck area. Unbelievable. You could have a huge party of people up here. That has got to be the largest sunbed I've ever seen. I mean, each of these is a double cushion. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you could happily have 10 or 12 people spread out on that if you wanted. And then some very nice little corner tables. Again, you can tuck yourself away in one of these. There is so much choice on this boat as to where you hang out. Wherever the sun is, you can find a sheltered space or a sunny space, exactly as you choose. And you can see there is access through the saloon door there. So you don't even have to go along the side decks if you don't want to, you can just go straight through the saloon. But let's go back and enter that from the cockpit to give you a full impression of the drama as you come through those cockpit doors for the first time. That's quite a walk along there. That's what 100 foot does for you. So, I, get, I tell you what, there's a couple more things to show you out here. In fact, first of all, there is a day heads in the cockpit. Really good idea to have that outside. So if you come up from having a nice swim or a sunbathe, you don't have to traipse through the cabins. And then obviously we've got the stairwell up to the flybridge. Again, lovely and wide, there's no squeezing through a narrow gap. You've got good railings on both sides. And then check this out. I mean, <laughs> it's utterly breathtaking. Again, it's the width that I just can't get over. It's normally it's a sort of long, thin shape of flybridge. This is, is square. It's almost like a tennis course up here. And again, it's all been sort of zoned into little areas. So you've got a lovely bar area here, a nice grill, Got lots of fridges and ice makers, a big sink, four lovely chairs up against it. And the way this whole yacht has been designed, it feels more like a kind of south of France villa, really, than a boat. That's partly the scale and the dimensions, but also the decor. So we've got this lovely kind of rattan-style outdoor furniture. It's all freestanding. Nice little drum table in the middle of it. Big teak outdoor dining table here, again, with those freestanding rattan style chairs. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know if it's rattan or rattan, who knows. Anyway, lovely sunbeds here again with those variable backrests that you can have facing either way or at different heights. Very nice, simple mechanism. And then a huge jacuzzi. And that all fills up, heats up. You can lie out there. What could be nicer than sunning yourself in that pool with a drink in hand, looking out over the sea behind you, getting more sunbeds, and of course a running machine. Now that's personally not quite so much to my taste. I'm not sure I want to be running while I'm sunning myself on holiday, but for those who do want to get a bit of fitness, why not? And then this big hard top overhead, all glazed, slightly uh, smoked glass, take a little bit of the edge off the sun, but how lovely to have the light filtering through there. And then outdoor helm station up here. There is one downstairs too, but the captain tells me he prefers to drive from up here most of the time because it's such a, such a lovely sheltered spot. And you can, in fact, wrap the whole of this area. There are covers and see-through covers so that you can completely enclose this whole area as you can the cockpit downstairs. So even if it's not quite such beautiful weather, you can effectively make it an enclosed area. Helm station itself, nothing particularly unusual or different about it. We've got simple wheel control. We've got the throttles for the two man engines. We've got full access to all the ship's systems. Check out absolutely everything from on board there. I won't sort of fiddle with it because the captain's got it all set up how they want it. Standard side power bow thrusters. They're obviously hydraulic for a boat this size. And of course, having two hulls, you have to have one in each of the hulls. 
Um, but really, because it's so wide, widely spaced, those two engines, he says it got such good control that you really don't need any clever joystick control and very rarely even needs to resort to the bow thrusters. You just spin it on the spot. Chart plotter, engine, controls, everything, all the normal standard kit. And then let's drop downstairs and have a look inside. Obviously, another wet bar down here. Again, fridge, ice maker, sink. So everywhere you go, there's always access to a nice cold drink, maybe prepare a snack, wash your hands, and then look at this. We've got sliding glass doors, and these will slide all the way back into here and all the way over there. So you have a huge opening into this grand main deck saloon. And check this out. I'm loving this. I mean, again, hugely wide. But look at this bar. How cool is that? A big chunk of space has been given over to this wonderful rose marble backlit bar area. So, sorry, rose quartz. I think that's why it's so luminous like that. But tall bar stools ran three sides. You've got nine of them in total. Huge bar area itself. Fantastically well equipped. Obviously, lots of chilling space here. You've got a wine fridge. You've got, uh, oh, I won't open them all, but you can see there's absolutely loads of fridge space. And very beautifully done. Again, it's kind of done almost like a, a villa, a sort of period villa. We've got this sort of antique brass uh, sinkware, lovely oak tops to go with the oak flooring, traditional kind of shaker style. And you can fit this out exactly as you want. It's a full custom build yacht. So you work with the yard in Poland and they will help you design. You could bring in your own designers, pretty much anything you want in terms of look and style and even layout. Now this is a, a fully private yacht. It isn't chartered at all. So the owner has spected out exactly how he wants it to be. They've chosen all their own furniture. You don't have to have a big bar area there. You could have more seating. They've also rather unusually actually included the galley within this whole area. So even though it is a fully crewed yacht and they usually operate with, uh, I think about five crew, but because it's a private yacht, they all know each other very well. So the galley is open to the saloon area. That's how they want it to be. You can of course have a, a, a more private separate crew separation. If you want to, you can have a, a galley down layout, but I really like this. It's all open. It's all part of the same zone. One of the things though that has make that perhaps a little bit more discreet if you want to, if the chef is at work, there is a magic glass screen, which at the moment is see-through. If I press that button, suddenly that becomes opaque. So again, it almost gives you the best of both worlds, but lovely cooking area. We've got two ovens, we've got a big induction hob. Nice to see that that's all fully sort of seaworthy so you can lock the pans in place. I mean, it is naturally a very stable boat because of being a hugely wide catamaran, but you still sometimes get a little bit of emotion in seas and that just keeps that all together. Again, lovely big porcelain Dublin style sink, more of that brass tapware. And this is the downstairs helm station. Again, it is all open. You know, you could have this completely separate if you want to. Blinds and all these screens, again, duplicating all the same systems that we saw upstairs. We've got the Raymarine, I've got the camera mode at the moment, but obviously that can be navigation, chart plotter, all the same kit. Very well kitted out. That's access to all the build systems and alarms. So, but you can see it's all ultimately open. Now all the chilling space for the galley is behind here. So there's lots of it. We've got fridges behind these doors. We've got freezers underneath coffee machine built in there and because you've got these two huge hulls they have technical areas underneath them and I'll just give you a little peek down one of them effectively there's a full length technical space and here it's used for storage you can see that's a lot of dry storage and cold storage for the galley under there but also it's used for all manner of different technical systems too so sitting area over here and then it's obviously a bit of a theme. They like to stay fit on board. We've got a gym area here, so I don't even know what that is or how it works. It looks a bit scary to me, but you can stay fit over there. You've got a big mirror behind it. You can see what you're doing. Another 
uh, looks like a step machine here. But you can fit this out exactly how you want. So that could be another little seating area here. And that is access back out to the sun deck that we've already seen. So very easy boat to move around. So let's go and have a look at some of the accommodation spaces. And let's start at the most important one of all, the owner's suite. You can see there's a staircase leading down into the hulls. And again, a kind of antique mirror here. And this is the owner's suite. Lovely big double bedroom. Again, I say bedroom because it just feels more like a, a house. And again, the whole style of it in this uh, slightly sort of period styling, but very comfortable. Again, more of this sort of rose colored effect. Huge window looking out over the water. Big opening section so you can have lots of fresh air. Lovely blinds, curtains, and I like this arrangement too. It's a sort of total glass wall leading into the ensuite bathroom. In fact, when I was shown around this earlier, I very nearly walked straight into the glass because it's so clean. But you can see there is a glass door there, and the crew have very kindly left it open for me so I don't make the same mistake again. But again, you know, the whole styling here is all tiled, got that antique brassware, lots of kind of fretwork in the cupboards, all on elevated legs. It's very Unusual styling. Lots of storage in here. I won't nose around too much because it is an owner's boat. And we've got a sliding door leading into the toilet area. You can see that is separate. So that will pull across if you want to keep that separate. And then a big walk-in shower there. Lovely, again, all tiled. Very unusual, but you can have it exactly how you want. That is entirely up to you. And then leads through to another big double cabin further forward. Again, similar in style, lots of this lovely natural oak storage everywhere you look. Huge king size bed. And again, ensuite bathroom, but this time not with a glass one. They've kept that a more traditional style bulkhead. They're all locked, I think. There's a little lock that undoes them. And then again, big shower, unusual kind of checkered floor, more of that antique mirror fretwork, but really it's, it's the scale that gets you. Now the other interesting thing to note is that all of these hulls have escape hatches in them. So you can see if, if for any reason you're unable to get up on deck, you can lift these up and there is an escape hatch through that technical tunnel and literally that leads out to the water if you ever need to. So let's pop back up show you some of the other guest cabins. So there is a matching stairwell over on this side, and that leads down to two more cabins. Now these are almost sort of mirror images. We've got one here. You can just see the side of the hull starting to taper a little bit towards the bow. But that is the scale of how wide each of these hulls are. And that's the benefit of having a 100-foot catamaran, is that the hulls suddenly become wide enough to have really generous cabins in them. So again, big king-size bed. Again, bathroom, all in that same style. These lovely big windows, big opening hatches. So often you get sort of little opening hatch just to let a bit of air in. But because we're so high off the water here, you can afford to have a bigger window without it being any kind of a safety hazard. And again, through here, exactly the same. Because this is a little bit further aft, it's a bit wider, there's no tapering, but same lovely style, same kind of checkerboard bathroom floor, even bigger bathroom. Again, access under the floor to more storage space or bilges if you need to, lots of storage. All of them have these sort of walk-in wardrobes. Come back up here, we're still not finished yet. Come around the back of that lovely bar area. Lots of storage here, obviously. And then there is another staircase leading down more towards the aft end of the boat. And yet another big double cabin. Again, this is slightly different layout in that the bed is facing forward towards the bow, but equally big bed. 
more cupboard space all around that same antique sort of period wallpaper and lighting. Rather nice little desk area here. You can see there's a pull out stool there. So nice if you need to do a little bit of work, set up your laptop. And of course, ensuite bathroom, very similar. No need to talk you through that again, but it just gives you an idea of the scale that you can have five big double cabins, all en suite, all the same, or very nearly the same scale and style. Of course, you can have that done differently if you want to. If it's a charter boat, you might decide to have the crew a bit more separate. And very generously, the captain has said, I can have a quick peek at his cabin whilst we're here. And he is in the hull opposite. But usually, if you did have a fully crewed boat, what you tend to do is have a larger crew area down here with all the crew cabins and probably the galley down here too. But as it is, knock, knock. No, I think he's kindly left it uh, open at the moment. See if I can just turn on some lights. So, oh, lovely desk space here so he can uh, sit and do his navigation or planning for the day, charts. Nice double bed here too, not quite as big as the guest cabin opposite, but he has got a lovely ensuite. I won't nose around there too much because it is his private space, but he kindly gave me permission to have a look around. So, and again, all of these have the same emergency escape if you want to, all air conditioned, each cabin separate space. And of course there is this drop down television. I should have pointed that out earlier, but that folds up into the deck head uh, when it's not in use, but very lovely to be able to sit there and watch it from this lounging area here. So I think that's given you a pretty good idea of the guest spaces, but there's one other thing I wanted to give you a quick peek at, and that is the engine room. I say engine rooms, but there are of course two, because there is one in each hull. But if we can just have a very quick peek down here, And so you can keep access to all your kind of cleaning gear and things here. We've got the electric panels. You can see all the sort of shore power and generator here. And one of the things that they have done very cleverly on this boat is they've equipped it with a really big pack of lithium ion batteries so that you don't actually have to have the generator running when you're at anchor. You've got at least six hours on the lithium ion batteries alone so that you don't have to have any noise or disturbance or fumes. You can have everything running, including the air conditioning, and it all just keeps going in silent mode. Now these, or well, this is one of the engines. It's a MAN V8, 1300 horsepower. I will check some of the stats for those in a minute, but see, it doesn't have to be a particularly big engine. And that's one of the beauties is you've got this two deck engine room, you've got a working surface on top of that, but you can, of course, get to everything you need to all the way around the engine. There's full standing headroom in here. Absolute joy to work. You've got cameras in here. And then, yet again, behind another waterproof door, there is the stern gear. So how cool is this? So we've got all access to the stern gear. You can actually see that is the rudder shaft coming down here. You can see it, obviously, on hydraulic steering. But if it comes to it, you can literally insert a tiller up there and manually steer it. So you have one crew member on each rudder uh, in contact with the skipper who can literally command what he wants you to do. So these are all the raw water strainers, lovely clear filters you can see. Fantastic access. And that is the air conditioning units. So really nice to have such good, easy access to everything, all in its own space, plenty of room plenty of light to access it all. So cruising speed 11 knots is the most sort of comfortable, typical cruising speed that they tend to use. It will go to about 15 or 16 knots. Obviously not a planing boat, it is a full displacement catamaran with those slender hulls. There are two V-Drive 1300 horsepower engines and a fuel tank of around 28,000 litres. Now the joy of being displacement is that it's also very efficient. So even when you're cruising at 10, 11 knots, it's only using 100 litres per hour. And that means that you can get a cruising range of well over 2,000 miles. So really significant cruising range. Happily take you across the Atlantic if you want to. Lots of options. So one other thing to point out is that under here, 
under these seats there is a huge toy garage area so there's room for two jet skis in there as well as e-foil boards, weight boards, anything you want because you've obviously got that tender you can actually ski behind. That is the Sunreef 100 Power, absolutely astonishing yacht. I hope that you've enjoyed the tour. I would love to hear your comments, what you make about this boat. Seems to me you get an awful lot of real estate, some fantastic deck spaces, a lot of cabins and a lot of volume and also activities because of all the space you've got for storing toys and tenders. I think it's an absolutely fantastic machine. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.